claim to be a perfect man. But I saw what was coming and I chose to act. From tropical islands to the African savanna all the way to the Himalayas, the Far Cry series has seen its fair share of exotic locations. So the idea of Ubisoft setting their latest game in Montana may seem like a step backwards to some, but in practice, everything seems to be a big step forward. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and we'd like to welcome you to Hope County with our review of Far Cry 5. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. Right away the game gets off to a strong start thanks to a very tense opening sequence. You play as a customizable male or female avatar dubbed the Deputy, who is traveling to Hope County as part of a law enforcement contingency out to arrest the leader of a powerful doomsday cult named Joseph Seed, since the cult's influence has unlawfully taken control of most of the county by force. Of course things don't go according to plan and you find yourself separated from your team, so it's up to you to help build a resistance with the locals in order to bring down the cult yourself. They all think the world's coming to an end now. They've been waiting for it. There's a lot to be admired here with the story, thanks to the different themes the game explores as you encounter each of Joseph Seed's three siblings within the game's three major regions. First, there's John, who influences his followers with a submissive belief to justify his extreme baptism methods. There's Jacob, a veteran who uses a psychological method to push an extreme survival of the fittest ideology. And then there's Faith, who uses a powerful hallucinogenic drug known as Bliss to brainwash her followers into a zen-like state. It wouldn't be a Far Cry game if you didn't trip balls at least once, right? Anyway, each of these three villains feels like a unique and imposing presence in their own separate ways, and their performances really capture their motives too. The same, unfortunately, can't really be said for the main villain, Joseph, whose rather monotone expression and subdued mannerisms don't really convey the messiah-like presence you would expect to see in a cult leader. This makes him fall kind of flat, not only compared to his siblings, but other more memorable villains in the Far Cry series as well. Now it remains to be seen whether you choose to embrace it. What a cast to decide. With the game being split across three different regions, each of them brings their own cast of characters. While we can't cover them all, the stories they bring are rather interesting affairs. Some can be touching, such as Nick Rye trying to look out for his pregnant wife, to completely over the top, like say with Sharky and his absurd love for flamethrowers and not wanting to wear pants, even though he never takes them off. Granted, the story's tone can cross into realms of completely ridiculous at times, especially during Faith's sections, but for the most part, the story delivers on what it needs to and when. Didn't go through all this trouble just to lose you now. Of course, Far Cry, and to an extent Ubisoft, is also known for its vast open worlds, and we think that Far Cry 5 might just be the best one yet. This fifth entry deviates a lot from the traditional Ubisoft formula, which, as you know, has drawn its fair amount of criticism recently. I know what you're thinking, and no. I ain't gonna have you climbing towers all over the county for me, so don't worry. Gone are the infamous Ubisoft towers that we first saw on their way out in Assassin's Creed Origins. Instead, the map's landscape is available to you from the start, and it's up to you to find a point of interest either by old-school exploration, finding notes hidden in the world, or by rescuing NPCs who will provide rumors or side quests or even hidden stashes. The game also borrows a few pages from Breath of the Wild's world design handbook. You start the game in a small island at the center of the map, and that's used as a training ground to get yourself accustomed to what the game has in store for you. Once you're done with those tasks, the map's three major regions are all available to you and you're free to tackle them in whatever order you want. Each of the regions also has a variety of things to do, ranging from main story missions, major allies to recruit, destroying various targets of interest, or the franchise's trademark Stronghold Liberation, which we are pleased to say are still just as fun all these years later. Also noteworthy is that there's no one right way to clear each region, even if the overall goal is the same, which is of course to defeat the Herald of Joseph that's in charge there. So you flip the region by earning reputation points gathered from completing some of the aforementioned tasks. Obviously some of the most important tasks yield a lot of reputation points, but even smaller tasks like rescuing civilians held hostage on the side of the road or destroying some of the cult supplies helps you further progress into the game. I can help fight if you get me out of here. As your reputation grows in each region, so too will the cult's firepower, meaning you'll need to keep finding ways to get increasingly heavy firepower yourself when you start having to contend with things like enemy airstrikes. 
but it'll all be worth it when your reputation is strong enough that you can enter a final showdown with the leader of that region. The father gave you a chance for salvation and you threw it away. Look at what you have done. Said firepower is also not lacking because you find multiple gun merchants across the county that will sell you a wide assortment of customizable weapons from pistols, machine guns, bows, flamethrowers, and more. Huh, insert joke about just like real life America here. Anyway, eventually you can also purchase vehicles, planes, and helicopters too. So um, here's the thing though, all of this fun stuff can be purchased with in-game currency or unfortunately real world money. Yes, this game does have possible microtransactions which are used solely at these shops for said weapons or for certain items of clothing you want for your avatar. Fortunately, there's nothing in the game you can't buy with in-game currency, and you can't use real money to speed up the game's actual progression or level up any faster either. We were able to get through the entire game just fine without spending an extra cent, so while its presence may feel kinda dirty for some players, thankfully it doesn't really affect the gameplay if you don't want it to. So I got no problem if you accidentally shoot them in their disloyal faces. Fortunately, you're not a one-man army this time around. Returning from Far Cry 2 is the buddy system. There are nine different allies you can recruit to fight alongside you at any time, and each one offers a fighting style to compensate for something you might be lacking, or you just might not want to do yourself. For example, you have Nick, who provides air support, which can be invaluable in later parts of the game. Then there's Jess, who uses a bow and can take out enemies silently. Or if you're not a people person, there's also a dog, a cougar, or a freaking bear that you can have fight alongside you. Each character offers their own unique personality, and if you unlock the ability to take two of them along with you, you can have some great moments listening to them banter. You're making yourself an easier target. Yeah, that may be the case, but I know you will pop them before they pop me, so in essence, I'm making them easier targets for you to pop. You see, making me work twice as hard. Hope County is a beautiful location to explore, with vibrant forests filled with wildlife, small countryside towns, and various landmarks to discover. Playing on PC at high settings, the graphics and sound design does a great job of capturing the atmosphere of rural Montana. Well, you know, dangerous cults aside, but whatever. Anyway, it's beautiful to look at, but it's not without a few technical hiccups. The AI at times can behave somewhat erratically, sometimes collisions between vehicles seem kind of unrealistic, and we fell through the floor at one instance, but one of the most frustrating bugs came in two cases in important story missions where mission critical assets didn't load properly, forcing a restart or reload from a previous save. While these were annoying, they weren't really enough to affect our overall session though. You know what this town needs? Balls. Finally, there's Ubisoft's big new user-generated hub, Far Cry Arcade. Which honestly feels like a completely different game altogether. This mode offers bite-sized maps that can be used in single or cooperative play, as well as a competitive multiplayer component. Now, all of these are made with user-generated maps thanks to a very detailed but hard-to-learn map editor provided with the game. Unfortunately, there really weren't enough players online during our review period to start any multiplayer matches, nor were there any user-generated maps available to properly evaluate how well this mode holds up from public content. So far, there are a few Ubisoft-made maps, so check back in a week or two to allow us time to assess that. I'm telling you, it sure is fun to melt their faces off. Even without assessing arcade mode, Far Cry 5 is an absolutely stellar game. The non-linear open world design works amazingly well, the memorable characters make it a series highlight, and most importantly, it's really fun to explore Montana and bring down that doomsday cult. It is a strong contender not only for the best Far Cry game, but also one of Ubisoft's best games to date. You and me, we'd be like Butch and Sundance. Nick, they both died at the end. Ah. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.